Welcome to Andy's Garage, I'm Andy Phillips. Today I'm gonna to show you just some quick tips on what you can do with your vehicle to help you get the most out of your vehicle as far as mileage. And what I'm talking about is getting your car to last over 100, 200,000 miles, things like that. Just some easy things that anybody can do. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I remember growing up, uh, a lot of times, you know, you would hear about vehicles and they'd be getting close to 100,000 miles and people would say, oh, time to get rid of it, you know, 100,000 miles, it's a lot. Those days are over. A lot of these newer vehicles nowadays, they're made to last way beyond that. However, you need to maintain them, you need to take care of them in order to get to that point. So seeing cars that are over 200,000 miles is not an uncommon thing anymore. So if you know some of these, some of these uh, tips, so to speak, if you have a car that you've had from the beginning, it's easy because you know how you're maintaining it and you can get it to last well beyond 200,000 miles. If you're purchasing a used car, unfortunately, you're at the mercies of how the previous owner took care of that vehicle. But if you know a little bit about vehicles, you can get some really good deals. You can get some cars out there. People are trying to get rid of them. 75,000, 100,000, 125,000 miles on it. If you know a little bit about cars, you can check it out and nothing's been abused as far as the engine transmission, a lot of your, your, your bigger dollar items. You can get really good deals on cars and just maintain it. You could easily get another couple hundred thousand miles out of those cars. But let's pop the hood and I'm, we're gonna go through all of my cars. I have six cars here that I have. We're gonna look at all of them. I'm gonna tell you the mileage that we have on each one of the cars, what I've done to get it to that point. And then we're gonna look at all of them. So we'll start with this one right here, which is a Chevy Trailblazer. So I'm gonna, Pop the hood and then we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you the, the odometer so we can see the mileage on it and then we'll talk a little bit about it. I'm gonna bring the camera up close. We're gonna start the engine up and then we're gonna go inside and take a look at it. You can see on this one here, we are at 200,938 miles. This one here is a 2003 Chevy Trailblazer EXT, but just crossed a 200,000 mile limit on this one. Now, obviously had to do some work on this over the time of the 200,000 miles, but nothing major like engine transmission work, things like that. Had to replace the catalytic converter, had to replace O2 sensors, mass airflow sensors, obviously brakes, things like that, alternator battery. Those are all parts that are going to go with any vehicle. Those are parts that are expected to go, which is why you can buy extras. What I'm looking at when I have a vehicle, I'm trying to get it to last long, I'm looking at the big dollar items like your engine, transmission, things like that. That's what you want to be salvaging. But as far as alternators, starters, batteries, brakes, sensors, things like that, those are going to go around the 75,000, 100,000 mile range. So when you've got a car lasting this long, it, it's to be expected. But let's head over to another vehicle and I'll show you what we've got going on with that one. Next, we have my Jeep Wrangler um, TJ. This one here is a 2001, but let's get inside and I'll show you what's on the odometer on this one. This one here, we're at 167,525, which is actually not too high for my vehicles. That's because this vehicle doesn't get driven much, but let's fire it up so we can hear how the engine sounds on this thing. You can see it started right up. Engine's nice and strong. I'll get a close up here, but no check engine lights on. Just maintaining this vehicle. And I mean, we're at 167, which I said that's kind of low for some of my vehicles, but um, still running great. I take it out on drives whenever I can. This is not a primary vehicle, um, but let me get a close up and then we'll head off to the next one. No check engine lights on. You hear that nice and strong. Let's head on down the line here to check out some of the other ones. 
All right, next we have this Dodge Neon. This is a SRT design, not the SRT4. And just to clarify, because I get comments sometimes when I work on this, they made different versions of the, uh, the Dodge Neon. There was the SE, then the SXT, the SX, SXT Special Edition, the SRT Design, and then the SRT4. The difference between the SRT Design and the SRT4 is that the SRT4 had the lower ground effects around the sides, and then it had the, the slightly um, higher performance engine. This has just the basic 2.0 uh, liter engine. However, it does have the body package of the SRT. So it's got the dual exhaust, the sunroof. It's got the kind of pattern on the inside. It's got the, the intakes on the hood and on the front, all that stuff. I just don't have the lower ground effects on the sides. That's what you can tell the difference. And also on the SRT4, it had two little intakes right at the bottom of the hood where the SRT design, it's, it's smooth right there. But let's go in here and I'll show you what we have on this one. This is one of my lowest uh, mileage vehicles here just because it sits so much because I'm getting ready to do a lot of work to it. But let's go inside. 127,612 miles on this vehicle. No check engine lights on. I was gonna start it so you could see the engine running. However, this car is in need of uh, getting the battery replaced. So I'm not gonna waste your time as I recharge the battery, but this one runs fine as well, as we saw the mileage on it. Uh, no check engine lights on this thing as well, but um, this one runs good. It's just this one sits the longest and this one's got a very old battery. So gotta replace that. Let's head on to the next one. All right, let's head down to another one here. This one here is our Nissan Quest. This is the newest one that we have, so it has the lowest mileage out of all of them. It's actually just below 100,000. I'm gonna show it anyway, even though it's got low mileage. And then we'll head down here to the Kia. That's my everyday car that I use. I work in another state, gets great fuel economy with the gas mileage, so I always use that. That one has a lot of miles. And then once we wrap this up, then I'm gonna tell you what I do in order to make the cars last that long. But let's check out this one. Okay. And we can see there, this one's 96,992. Excellent condition on this one. This one's just used local. Uh, my wife and kids use it for like soccer and school, things like that. So it doesn't really get a ton of usage on it, but let's fire it up so you can check it out. Just like with the other vehicles, you can see no check engine lights on. Everything is running great. All right, so before we head down here to my little Kia Rio, let's head into the garage. I'm gonna show you a car I have in there. Doesn't get driven at all right now because it's being restored, but it's got over 100,000 miles. We'll start that one up as well. Now this right here, this is my Lamborghini Countach LP400S replica. Not a real one, replica. Been doing a lot of restoration on it for the last several years. If you want to check out some of the videos I've done documenting that restoration progress, I'll have a couple links down in the description if you want to check that out. But this vehicle here has 107,000 miles on it. Um, still doing some work to it, so it's not um, ready to go on the road yet. However, when I got it, it didn't work at all. Um, it had been neglected, but did a lot of stuff to it to get it back up to par, rebuilt some parts on it, but the engine on it's a very good engine. But let's go ahead, I'm gonna get a close up of it and I'll start it up, you can hear how this one sounds as well. You can see even this one here that's been sitting just by maintaining it with what I'm going to show you. Thing starts up right away. It's nice and strong, but let's head back there to my Kia Rio for the last one. We'll take a look at those mileage and then we'll wrap up this video. All right, so this is it right here. This is a 2013 Kia Rio. This is one of the 
cheaper cars you can get out there, which is even what makes what I'm going to show you even more impressive because these cars, most people don't expect them to last more than 100,000 miles. But let's check on here and I'll show you the mileage. There you have it. 276,600 miles on this vehicle. Let me start it up so you can see something. No check engine light. Now we do have that airbag light. Don't worry about that. It's the steering clock spring that needs to be replaced on this vehicle. That's for a future video. But passes inspection with no problem. Let's head under the hood. All right, well, you saw that. 276,000 miles on this vehicle. Thing runs great. I drive it probably about 140 miles a day back and forth to work because I work in another state, as mentioned already earlier. But now I'm going to talk about what I do with these vehicles to make them last long. And I apologize for waiting to the end. I hate it when other YouTubers and um, other um, social media people do that. That wasn't my intent. I just wanted to show you the vehicles we're dealing with. But so I apologize having to wait to the end. But key thing for this thing and let's head out here under the hood and I'll show you exactly what you want to be checking and what you want to be maintaining that will ensure that you can get the most out of your vehicle. Key thing so important is check your fluids. That, that, that's the secret. Check your fluids on a regular basis. If you have a vehicle that's burning or leaking fluids a little bit, if you're not able to have it in your budget to get it fixed, please check up on that on a regular basis. I check the fluids on my vehicles. I try to do them at least once a week. The ones that are sitting a lot, not as much because they're not being driven as much, but like this one here, van, things like that, I check them on a regular basis. You want to be checking your oil. If your oil levels get just below where they need to be, top it off. If you have a vehicle that's known to maybe burn oil or leak a little bit, keep some spare oil in your trunk and check that periodically. What you don't want to have happen is get that to start dropping below where it needs to be and then you cause damage to your vehicle. Also, your other fluids, your coolant. You don't want your vehicle overheating, so check your, your fluid levels for, for the coolant as well. Let me head over here and I'll show you what we're talking about. For example, on this car here, it says engine oil. Just pull that dipstick out and check. Make sure that it's where it needs to be. This one was just running, so the levels are all over the place, but you have right here, that's your full, that's your empty. You wanna always be at that full line. For your coolant levels, on this particular vehicle here, this is where your coolant goes in. Other vehicles have different reservoirs, things like that. You'll see the line right there. That's, that's our fill line. You can see we have it right up there, even a little bit above it. But you want to keep that where it needs to be so the vehicle doesn't overheat. And if you have a vehicle like this one where you can check your transmission fluid, on not all vehicles can you do it. Some of them it's all contained. But if you have a dipstick, check that too. It's important to know how to check it. Transmission fluid, you want to check it with your engine hot. Oil, you want it to be cool so it can settle down. So make sure you understand as far as what fluids and, and when they need to be checked. You want to make sure you're on a level ground. You don't want to be checking it on a hill where the levels could be out of whack. If your driveway is on an angle, then take the car and get it on level ground before you check your fluids. That way you're getting an accurate reading. I'll have some links to some videos I did down in the description where I show how to properly check transmission fluid. But you want to check that. Another thing you want to check is it, let's bring the camera over here. Check your power steering fluid. If that gets low also, you can damage your power steering pump. Pop this off. This one here is fine, but you can see right there where it has your, your full and empty dots right there as far as when to add and when not, and when it's fine. And you can see this one's fine, but check that as well. That's not gonna obviously affect the your engine and transmission, but still you don't want to be putting extra money into your vehicle, getting a new power steering pump if you could just maintain it. Also your brake fluid, and once again, that's not going to affect your engine and transmission. You don't want to be having issues with your brakes and causing an accident. Now, as mentioned already, <clears throat> some things are just going to need to be replaced. Your alternator, your battery, your brakes, things like that. They're going to go at some point and you're going to have to replace them. A lot of times they're made to last around 7,500,000 miles. Also your fuel pump, fuel sending unit, things like that. That's to be expected. So certain parts are just going to need to be done, but you want to really take care of your engine and transmission. Those are your more expensive parts. And if you just do your regular maintenance, replacing the parts as it's needed, checking up on your fluids, you'll allow the other larger components to, to last way beyond what normally you would think they would be. Now, 
Another thing that you want to check also is you want to also keep an eye out for your check engine light in your vehicle as shown here. You'll see on this particular vehicle it says service engine soon. On some other vehicles you'll get a little engine light symbol as shown here. If you see that on your vehicle, you want to make sure you get a scan tool, connect your OBD2 port underneath and get a reading on that. If you don't have one, you go to any, well, not any, but most automotive parts stores like Advanced Auto, AutoZone, things like that, they'll check them for free. Um, I'll have a link down in the description for a little cheap Bluetooth one that you can pick up. It just connects to your phone, you download the app, you can see what's going on. A lot of times that's pertaining to like your O2 sensors, your mass airflow sensors, things like that, which could just be around a hundred bucks, a little over a hundred bucks to replace. But if you leave it unattended, it can lead to more issues with your vehicle, which could cause thousands of dollars, especially if you wind up destroying your engine or things like that. So it's important if you see that light come on, connect to it, see what the issue is and try to get it fixed. If it's not in your budget, sometimes you can clean those sensors like the O2 sensors, the mass airflow sensors. I'll have links down in the description where I go into how you can clean them sometimes. That might at least give you time so you can save up in your budget so you can replace the part. Sometimes it can also be your catalytic converter. There's some catalytic con converter cleaners out there. I'll have links down in the description for some products that I've done to show how to clean them. Sometimes if it's too far gone, you got to replace your catalytic converter. But if you're spending four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a catalytic converter, it's a lot cheaper than having to replace your car because your car is gone now. Another thing that I like to do is I like to keep my RPMs no higher than 2,000 RPMs, unless I'm merging or something where you got to give a little more power. But I like the the strain on the engine to be low. If you keep riding your RPMs high and really straining your engine, that can take a toll on its life as well. So I keep it running around like 1,500 to 2,000. It's a nice, easy pace on the engine. So just to recap what we did, check your fluids on a regular basis. Make sure your fluid levels are good. A lot of times that's your biggest problem. Next thing, if you have a check engine light, get one of these things or have someone else check it for you. Find out what the problem is. See if you, if you can clean it or fix it, whatever, but get that taken care of. And then last but not least, don't be thrown off if you have a vehicle that's getting up in age where you have to replace your alternator, starter, things like that. Those are usually gonna go around that time. The main thing you're looking for is your engine, your transmission, the bigger dollar items. But with just the basic maintenance as we covered in this video, as we saw, we have vehicles sitting here that are anywhere from a little over 100,000 to 276,000. They're all passing inspections. They're all running great. They started right up. We heard the engine's nice and strong. So I hope this video was informative for you and just kind of showed you just some basic routine maintenance that can help you get the most out of your vehicle. You don't want to be getting rid of a vehicle every 100, 150,000 miles when you can double that time, save your money. And especially nowadays with the inflation, the way it is and stuff, put your money to use somewhere else. But hope that this was informative for you. Please send me any questions and comments. I would love to hear from you. And as always, I appreciate all the support. So please like this video, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.